Hello, everyone, and welcome to another audio commentary on when I used to be direct to disaster, and only a year and a half after the last commentary. Yeah, I don't have the project that I was working on this week done, and I figure it's been too long since I've left you with some content, so hey, might as well do, do a commentary. Um, I really want to do these commentaries on a more regular basis, so it will not be another year and a half until the next one. I guarantee that one. Uh, so what we have here is one of my favorite sequences of my of this incarnation of my show, where I'm carrying this big box of plug-and-play games to the tune of Paperboy, and my grandmother was doing the camera work, and she did pretty well, uh, all things considered. Um, it wasn't really that hard of a shot, but I thought that she did she did well for someone who's never handled a camera before. And by the way, I I, I still have that box, but it is way past overflowing i would never be able to carry it like that that the i am actually exhausted here imagine I, I can only imagine what what it would be like to carry the box as is just how tired i'd be then um so about my fascination with plug and plays i honestly don't know when it started i just started collecting plug and plays when i when i moved to utah about uh six years ago um I don't know why I really don't I guess I guess it was just a morbid curiosity of, of of what these little game consoles could do of what they could contain and I just wanted a collection that nobody else really has very few people actually actively collect these plug and play consoles even even back when they were new they were just a niche a niche market so it's it's becoming harder and harder to find them and I guess I just wanted to find something that sets me apart and this is an obsession that continues to this day um, yeah right here where I'm dumping out the box oh god um, I, I think I say that I have about 80 of them I have about triple that number nowadays I, I on my snups account it says that i have about 275 different listings for plug and play games and uh, it's still growing i'm still finding stuff on ebay and thrift stores and i'm actively adding to this collection it is still an active as anyone who's followed my blog or even my youtube channel knows that i am still collecting and featuring them I kind of lie here. I said that I like plug-and-play games better than uh, consoles. That was really just an over over exaggeration. I n no plug-and-play game can beat the Xbox. Ugh. I'm j I just remember that I still only have a 360 and not a one or anything. I really need to get on that. Uh, but what does fascinate me about plug-and-play games is just what what they can do with them. Each one is custom built and incredibly. It's amazing what what they can do with these bodies and with what they can put inside these casings. Um, you know, with a video game system, you have the hardware there and you can just build a game around that hardware. With plug and play games, it's basically all custom. You have to build the hardware, build the casing, build whatever it takes to get those games running. It, it's just basically an entire console on its own. And that's that's what that's one of the reasons that why I'm so fascinated by them. Well just what they can do. All these games I'm showing right now, this little montage that it just demonstrates all the different versions of these plug and play games that you can't really you can't really see with that with modern day consoles it would take way too many accessories to uh, pull off all these things that these plug and play consoles can do and though admittedly these consoles are more expensive actually no these consoles are about the same price as uh, getting games for real consoles I think back in the day, a plug-and-play console could cost anywhere between $30 and $60, which even for a guy who's fascinated with these plug-and-play consoles, that's a bit of a stretch. That, that's, that's an, I'm glad that today I'm picking them up for about $5, $5 to $20 a piece. 
Um, yeah, so here, I still love Guitar Hero. I still love Guitar Hero and Rock Band. I love these rhythm games where it feels like I'm playing a guitar and playing drums. I have upgraded my drum set. I have a Rock Band 2 Xbox 360 and some wired guitars and a keyboard. And uh, I even have an Xbox One drum set and guitars for when I eventually get the Xbox One console and the Guitar Hero Live stuff. Um, honestly, I, I haven't followed the Guitar Hero or Rock Band markets for a while. I don't remember if they've made any, made any new games recently. Um, yeah, the last one I remember is Guitar Hero Live, and that was like a good three, four years ago. So, uh, I really need to catch up on some stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I was actually really surprised to find guitars that, uh, that could plug in, plug into a TV and yet still function as Guitar Hero clones. I always thought that the hardware for that would be way too advanced for what they're dealing with. And yeah, as you're going to see in a second, it's, um, it is, it, they didn't take advantage of what they had that well. A lot of these are vastly inferior to Guitar Hero, the games of today, or even yesterday, but it, it's just, for what they could pull off for these, uh, these rhythm-based, uh, games that feature a guitar peripheral and these MIDI songs, it's, I'm very surprised at what they could do. Um, even for the worst games, even they have some, some sort of I don't want to say nostalgic feel. That's not the right word. Um, just, I don't know. I have the same uh, fascination with these clone Guitar Hero games as I do with these pirate game ca game cartridges that I have. Just what they're, how they're able to take these uh, state of the art games for the time and shrink them down, put them on a, uh, put them on an inferior console. That's just amazing to me. So. Uh, this was a really fun episode to do. I knew that when I was doing this show, this had to be one of the first episodes to cover because these Guitar Hero guitars are just the that they're a they're. I'm having trouble finding words today. Uh, they are a great example of what plug and play games can do. Uh, I have found some better ones. I um. But for the time, for when I first started, I knew that these were some of the best games that I had, even the worst games. But yeah, like I say here, why, why, why didn't they make them stereo? They're guitar games. In fact, make them all stereo. The, the, the TVs have had stereo input since forever. And yeah, I still have that Y connector. That's how I uh, get the get the sound into both speakers when I'm recording my videos for YouTube. Um, <clears throat> but for, but to have these guitars, especially when all these knockoff consoles have stereo sound, to not have these guitars have stereo sound, it just blows my mind. Just How can you be so cheap? How can you be... Even the official ones, even the Hannah Montana guitar that I'm going to show later, it, it, it's only mono. But but you're expected to play it on these big living room TVs, and why? <sighs> um, I don't remember why, why I decided the order that these things go in. I think that I just wanted to get the worst out of the way, and this is arguably the worst. Um, I have picked up some other Guitar Hero games, some other Guitar Hero clones, since I made these episodes. So I have a Bratz guitar, and I have a... Uh, I can't remember the other one. Um, Ashens featured it on his channel one time. Guitar, n Not Guitar Buster. Um, but whatever it was, I, I have that one. I think I have one other. I need. I really need to check my my collection again. But um, as far as I can tell, as far as I've played them, and as far as I can remember, this is still the worst one. They, I, I don't understand 
why no I, of course i understand why they made it it's to capitalize on the guitar hero craze of the time of course which is all but non-existent nowadays but um this is a piece of crap guitar this is just embarrassing what what they tried to do that the songs barely even resemble songs it's like you it's like they listen to the riffs of these more famous songs and just told this first year guitar student to play the riffs and so you got like uh over and over and over and over again and oh it's uh, like i say it's it's ear splitting and it's boring it it, it legitimately sounds like somebody practicing guitar it, it doesn't even it, they don't even have a full band behind these uh, these songs for this control for this console it's so boring i mean i do a joke where i'm nodding off that's one of my favorite jokes across this show but it legitimately did it, it, i legitimately almost fell asleep I, I played like all how many songs were on there 10 15 <sighs> but i legitimately almost fell asleep while record while recording footage for this game it was oh I'm sorry, I'm re-reviewing this game even though I have this uh, the review right here. So, um I'm not saying anything new probably. Um let's see what is something new I can say. Um oh yeah, so later on I give the remake Guitar Superstar the credit that they that it has this option to plug in an MP3 player. Do we still use that term anymore, MP3 player? I thought it was just, it was all smartphone and all that. Um, but it, it gives you the opportunity to plug in a, an audio device. And <laughs> I'm sorry, this is the joke I was talking about, the where I'm nodding off. It's funny. Um, but yeah, th this guitar has the opportunity, gives you the opportunity to plug in an MP3 player and play just randomly generated songs on the guitar. Um, nowadays, I don't really feel that that's as impressive as I did back then because I have seen all these different music generators for all these different uh, platforms. So it's not as impressive that they just give... The <laughs> I'm t yeah, this is another part that I... Well, okay, it's not something I really like. Um, I... It looked a lot better in my head when I was doing this. I could not pull off the seizure movements that these sprites seem to... <laughs> yeah, you're just e eating the guitar there. I don't remember what what uh, guitar guy did that. Pete Townsend or something? No, that's it. That's the uh, guitar smasher and talker. No, not Pete. No, that's... Ah. Regardless, um... Yeah, I don't, I don't feel like the random generated music is that impressive anymore, but I guess I should have brought that up for the first one. It's just, I was so bored and pissed off that this, and especially this, especially how it has this little bit of plastic, you can't touch the top button. Oh, I, I, I just didn't want to give this any compliments. None, none, so... Ugh, I still have it, I st and it still works, and I, I need to re-review these. I need to actually feature these on my blog. I, I should set aside a month for uh, comparing all these different Guitar Hero games, including the ones that I've bought since then. I need, to, I need to just feature them all on my blog, and then sometime after that I need to feature all these microphone games, all these keyboard games, and all these, just all these clones that I've, uh, I've, that I've collected over the years. I there I find another system like every week or two. So uh, I just hope that I can stay alive for long enough to feature my entire collection. I really need to uh, rethink a few things about what I do with my show to make that a po to make that happen. Um, I mean, I only feature a plug and play game usually uh, regularly want and once every three weeks. I mean, I have my Lego and my... I go Lego uh, plug-and-play game and pirate game. Lego plug-and-play game, pirate game. I need to rethink that. I need to figure out a way that I can do all three and satisfy the fans of all three. Hopefully. 
Um, all this Guitar Hero footage that you're seeing, I actually recorded. I recorded on a very crappy 360p uh, recorder, that, that video capture device that I had back then. Um, I've upgraded to this uh, Elgato Game Capture HD, which I hope is giving better video quality. Um, it, it, these these plug-and-play games, uh, a few of them today, like the NES Classic Edition or these new Big Buck Hunter games, they have HD capability, but for the most part, plug-and-play games just have uh, the video and mono sound. So it's really hard to um, it's really hard to capture them in high quality, especially with my earlier videos where I was still using that old crappy video recorder. So I'm hoping that I'm improving in some way with my show. I'm hoping I'm not stuck in 2009. Uh, this was a I when this was another thing that I knew I had to do when I was doing the video, when I was writing for the video, that I had to set up this slow motion thing I almost did smash the guitar I almost wanted to just smash it but like I said it cost me so much money and I knew I couldn't find a replacement so you have that gag at the end I'm sorry if you if this is the first time you've seen this and I've just ruined that for you but honestly you really shouldn't be watching the commentary before you watch the real video anyway um, I don't have that great an editing an editing sift system. I can't do video within video, so I had Bob Show do this back when he wasn't as popular as today, and back when we were still on speaking terms. Well, that's another story. And ah, uh, what ruins this is the audio audio quality. Everything is fluctuating in and out. Ah, this was the first time that I was using an actual microphone. On my last episode, I was using my computer microphone, and that just made everything sound really muddy, really um, low quality. I mean, even more even more low quality than I have today. And, and so when I was in the middle of that episode, I realized I had a rock band microphone, which is actually what I'm using right now. Um, and surprisingly, it gives really high quality. I'm talking on, like I said, I'm talking on one right now. Um, and so I, it just, it took a while for me to get the audio tolerable. I can't say perfect, but tolerable because in this video, I am, the audio is constantly fluctuating between, oh, you can't hear me. I'm just whispering in the, in, in the background to boom, I'm in your ears. Ugh. And also you have all these, I never figured this out. I don't know why the audio fades in and fades out. It was, I think I just set up this setting on my, on my program to accidentally have all the audio fade in. I could never tell, though. This was one of the very first episodes I made, and I was still learning all this stuff. And even today, I don't quite know what everything does, but I never had the problem again. Like, I, had, I actually had to overlap a few of the... A few of the audio tracks over another to get them to, 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 so you could hear the start of that sentence. But today I don't seem to have that problem. I don't know what I did, or I, I don't know what I did back then, but everything's working fine now. I need to get a new editing software and a new editing program. That's what I really need to do. And yeah, this was back when. Uh, this was back when I was just starting to learn how to avoid the copyright bots, and back when um, you could raise the pitch of a song and YouTube wouldn't rec wouldn't recognize it. You wouldn't get flagged for it. Um, I don't know if that's still how it works. YouTube has changed its algorithm so much, it, you, it basically flags a video for even saying a song title, for just the, the barest transgression. Even if you're only using like 10 seconds at a time, which is how most people avoid the uh, avoid the copyright bots, it's it still somehow detects that. In fact, I'm surprised that this episode is up. 
I'm surprised that it hasn't been taken down after I re-uploaded it. Of course, I say that, and then I'm g probably going to go back and, oh, it's gone. It's gone, and I have a bu whole bunch of strikes on my account. Oh, my account's gone. Oh, well, that was fun. That's, thanks for all those years, but uh, I'm gone. Can't, can't get it back. It's going to be like past made present. It's all gone. I, I wish I could do something else, but I, I wish I could have something else on besides YouTube. But nah, they they have a monopoly. I I can't. They have the most popular, the most popular platform. So what am I gonna do? Um. So yeah, this this guitar game that this was not faked. This actually happened at the very end when I was done playing this console. This the text just went haywire. It just it just all over the screen, and then it just froze and turned off. I have no idea how that happened. I have never gotten that to happen again. But wasn't that just the perfect ending to that se to that sequence? How could you not love the console just? breaking on you at when you're thinking of a way of a reason not to play it it was an okay console i'll give it that it wasn't it wasn't fantastic well none of these are really fantastic but um it was okay uh, I, among all these other guitar games it was okay and i was just thinking of a reason to say no and that happened <laughs> how perfect how perfect could that is that? How how what had to happen in order for for that glitch to happen right when I was uh, amazing, amazing. That was probably the best luck I've ever had in this show, and it was where one of my consoles broke. <laughs> uh, so the reason why I featured this DDR uh, Disney mix pad, uh, it was the only. DDR pad that I had at the time. Well, okay, I, had, I also had this knockoff DDR pad, which I couldn't really get to work, but this was the only one that I had. This was the only real one that I had at the time, and I thought that this was the only plug and play pad that they had. Uh, since then, I've got, I found a lot more DDR ripoffs, a lot more DDR plug and play clones, and that's another thing I'm going to have to feature one of these days. It's another um, really interesting idea for a for a theme month i'm gonna have to feature all my ddr pads Ugh. problem is i'm gonna need to really get some exercise i'm gonna need to get myself in uh the ddr mode i am not one to exercise i i i weigh like 250 pounds it's really hard for me to get up and dance and i get winded very easily so i miss being thin I miss my figure in these sh in these videos. I miss my 22 year old looks. It's just, uh, can I switch places with you? I don't care if you're filmed in like 240p with this really cheap camera I got from got from a thrift store. You're not even in 16 by nine, which was the standard back then. I just please come and come and switch, please. Um, I have figured, I finally understand these, um, the, I finally understand these credit sequences that I'm showing in, uh, no, these videos that I'm showing in my credit sequence, uh, they're, they're parodies of Risque Business, the Tom Cruise movie where, um, he's dancing to this song. I didn't, I ha I didn't see it back then, so I had absolutely no idea what was going on. It was just, it was just some weird Guitar Hero uh, trailer for the for the credits. Nowadays, I can't do this. Of course, nowadays I don't even really make these kind of videos, so I wouldn't be, I wouldn't do it anyway. But, you know, I, I just needed something to show. <laughs> Again, another favorite part. Just this gives you a great example of how long it takes to make these videos. I mean, you only see about 20, 30 minutes, but it can take an hour just to just to make these these 30 seconds of just filming me playing all these games, just setting up all these all these systems, turning them on, getting them plugged into that 
really old TV that I used to have before I upgraded to 4K, but I still have this older TV for the older gun games. Um, yeah, and even today, even when I'm doing my stop motion animations, it's it takes so long. It can take like a week or two just to make five minutes. It takes it takes roughly a minute or two to set up each shot, and each shot is only about a tenth or even a twentieth of a second. So, oh, these videos probably um probably helped me prepare for my current stop-motion animations. It, it gave me the patience to make these movies, the, these videos, these sketches, these animations, these whatever you want to call them. So that's that's one thing that I like about the about my early incarnation here. Uh, it's really hard to go back and watch these, truth be told. it's it, They're hideously low quality. I mean, you know, you could argue that what I'm doing right now is still really low quality. But back then, I had no idea what I was, what I was doing. I just had the cheapest, the cheapest hardware possible, the cheapest everything on hand. I, I, I had no idea what I was doing, no idea how to uh, review these things, how to... <laughs> Another favorite part here, the... the uh, um, I can't remember what it's called. I think it's called This Week. I've been mostly playing guitar, and I dubbed it over Hannah Montana's Wreck- uh, Miley Cyrus, sorry. A completely different person. Uh, Miley Cyrus's Wrecking Ball. That was, that was funny. Um, but yeah, yeah, these, these videos are really low quality. They're hard for me to go back and watch, especially with my grandpa in them, because he, he died recently, and it's just really hard seeing him again. But yeah, the, these videos helped. Uh, I can't, I can't uh, deny that. Uh, anyway, yeah, this this Hannah Montana game to this date is the best Guitar Hero clone I've played. I know I say later that the Guitar Superstar game is the best, and I guess, I guess it's the best for different reasons. It's the best because. It actually has guitar songs because it actually feels like you're playing a guitar, um, and and it's actually very responsive and looks a lot like Guitar Hero. Uh, however, Hannah Montana, in, in terms of quality, is the best one. Uh, it has higher graphics. It actually has the vocals. So. As much as it doesn't fit with the Guitar Hero genre, as much as it doesn't fit with the aesthetic, it is the best. It, it's the best out of all the clones. Um, there, I recently found a Camp Rock version. It, it, it was apparently released around the same time as the Hannah Montana one, and um, I found both the Camp Rock and the Hannah Montana games in their boxes. I'm going to have to talk about them one of these days. Um, I know absolutely nothing about Camp Rock. I'm probably going to know something when I start to review it, but as of now, I don't know if it's good or if it's bad. If I don't know any of the songs. Uh, at least when I was doing the Hannah Montana game, I knew some of the Hannah Montana songs. And actually, I kind of like a few i like um i like best of both worlds i like nobody's perfect um is that it hey that's all i remember but at, at, at least i can say that there are some things about hannah montana's discography that i like and i should probably shoot myself for saying that but yeah yeah, as much as I hate to say it, the Hannah Montana plug-and-play guitar game is probably the best at, in terms of actual quality and in terms of uh, in terms of how much work goes into it. Not the best build. I hate the but button build, and I hate that you have to tap instead of strum. But gameplay-wise, it's the best. I wonder if I can say the same about Camp Rock. I'm really gonna have to go into that. 
Um, but yeah, yeah, th this is that that was another problem where the uh, button the they scroll down. They scroll down like DDR. It's really hard to keep track when you're doing a guitar game that scrolls like DDR. I'm gonna say the same thing about the uh, about the Shredmaster, I believe it's called the 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 smaller guitar. Um, but you can't put notes scrolling downward on a, on a guitar game. It just I mean, if they were scrolling upward, that would actually be something. But downward, you, it's it distracts you. It you your eyes just aren't built to follow the notes going downward. They have to be coming toward you, or they have to go up. If they're going down, then it's really hard to sync up. I'm really glad that the Hannah Montana songs were so slow because otherwise, I would not have been able to get through any of them even on easy. And here we go with the Paperboy music again. You can't go wrong with the Paperboy music. You know, if, if you can't set a mood for a video, always use 8-bit music. There is nothing that 8-bit music cannot fix. And it really helps that a lot of people don't really mind when if you use their 8-bit scores. I mean, even if you know, these are obviously copyrighted, but nobody seems to care. Well, okay, maybe you maybe you can get flagged sometimes. I got flagged for a Xevious video one time. That was stupid. I don't know why Nintendo cares. They, these vi these games are like 40 years old, and here they are. They they made a whole list of stuff that you can't feature. They they you have to obey their list, and then you have to give them like practically all your money. You have to say only positive stuff about them. That's stupefyingly idiotic. Who, how is, how do they expect anyone to follow along with that? How do they expect, you're ruining your revenue by restricting what people can say, can say in future about your games and no, and this is a huge PR disaster. Why are you doing this? Oh. But I digress. Oh, this Shredmaster Jr. This was such a disappointment. This was actually the game that I was really looking forward to, that I really wanted to talk about, because look at all these songs. Smoke on the Water, I Love Rock and Roll, Iron Man, You Give Love a Bad Name, Billion Dollar Babies, Hotel California, Paradise City, Smells Like Teen Spirit, Paranoid, Master of Puppets. All these songs are rock legends. And they put it in this console, this incredibly hard to play very small very uh very screechy console and and yeah like i said you can't you can't follow the notes as they scroll downward that's just not how the mind or the or the body is is designed to follow stuff and you have to be very exact with the buttons I actually went back and tried this game again. I thought that when I was first recording this, that it was just a um, a delay that that I that my recording software was putting in a slight delay that was making the notes really hard to hit. No, no, that's actually what it's like with the console. I can't follow anything because it they just, they come down way too quickly and you have to get them exactly inside the it's exactly inside the circles. Oh, so in a way it's actually worse than the first Guitar Superstar. I, the first one was that that game was also really hard to hit, really hard to play along, but at least you could at least the notes are coming towards you. At least you could hit the notes. This this is possibly the worst. I, I'm sorry. I apologize to the the guitar super the guitar superstar game. This is the worst one out of the lot. This is borderline unplayable, and the minis are so bad you can't even play it. Oh, <sighs> or you don't want to you don't want to play. You don't want to hear it. That's what I meant. I mean, I do this gag where the uh, the Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared puppet has his ears bleeding, with, which you can't go wrong with that scene. But that's how it feels, especially with Master of Puppets, especially where they're trying to uh, imitate the vocals. It doesn't work. It doesn't... It, it <laughs> 
can't go wrong with Warwick Davis either. But yeah, why even try to uh, replicate the vocals in the first place? It's a guitar game. Ugh. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really getting worked up about these. I really need to feature them again. I really need to go back and play them again, see if a few years have softened my image or made it even harder and or fiercer and uh i'm sorry not my image my outlook my image is um well let's not get into that but um oh all right one more one more and i'm glad because i'm kind of running out of steam here um but yeah, this is, in terms of design and in terms of um, actual gameplay and all that, uh, this is one of the best guitar games. It, Like I said, it, it's um, you can actually play the guitar. The uh, controls are pretty good. This was my my first reaction actually when i when i picked this i i think i picked the first guitar here gu guitar superstar game up and i played it and i didn't like it and then a while later i found this guitar game and i turned it on and i thought that i bought the right i bought the same thing i think i almost gave it back because i thought it was just going to be <laughs> <laughs> Another favorite gag there. Oh well, actually no. I li I like this one where I'm where where I have my head in my hands even better. Just where I'm going. Oh god, this is gonna be painful. And then I slowly uh, I slowly take my hands away from my face as I realize that the, the game has more to it. That's how I actually felt in reality. When I bought this game, I thought it would be the exact same thing as the first one, but then I played it so much better. I, it was made and it was made and released by the exact same studio, by, by Scenario, whom I've, I've featured a few times before with, with their uh, knockoff consoles and their uh, big bonus slots, and I have so many other Scenario games. They are... Um, I don't want to call them the worst plug-and-play co company, but there is a very low-quality aspect to them. There's a very not-caring, slapdash, ugly sort of uh, quality to a lot of their games. Even when they're colorful, even when they're uh, well-animated, they're just very grainy, very choppy, very... Um, kind of hard to play, honestly. <laughs> but so to see something from to see this from scenario especially after the first one is truly mind-blowing i am amazed that i found one of these games from from a company not like scenario um though i i i wish that i had i still had that red guitar though um it broke the I, I think I wrapped the cord too tightly around it because it would not connect to the TV afterwards. Uh, but luckily, I found a white one, which honestly might might arguably looks cooler than the red, red and black. Um, and yeah, that works. So, uh, like I keep saying, I need to feature these again. I I I have found so many since I last did this and my review style has changed so much in fact these that's one of the reasons why these videos are so hard to watch uh, that my style is just so different than what i'm used to today like this this scene coming up right here where it, it sort of mirrors the no earlier it's hard for me to watch it it, it just shows me as such a dork it, it seems like, oh, God, that smile. Oh, and I'm not centered, and... Uh, of course, you have Ode to Joy. You can't go wrong with Ode to Joy. But, yeah, these videos are hard for me to go back and watch. And not, not just because of the presence of my grandpa, who isn't here anymore, but because I had no idea what I was doing. I was clearly trying to... In, imitate uh, the nostalgia critic and angry video game nerd and I had no personality of my own no um, 
no idea what I was doing, no no focus. I, I tried to focus on a lot of different things. I had the VCR board games, which I don't have anymore. I had the plug and play. I had the movies. I had, um, what else? The retro gaming. Did I, did I try featuring anything else? Oh, and then I tried these Let's Plays, which w end up even worse than these reviews. It's just really hard for me to go back and watch these, and... Honestly, I'm surprised that they got any views whatsoever. <clears throat> um, at, at least what I, with what I'm doing right now, um, you could argue these blog reviews are even less popular than what I was doing back then, but I'm at least comfortable with them. I'm more comfortable with writing, with being a behind-the-scenes type of guy than, <clears throat> than appearing on screen and... Um, doing these reviews, doing these angry reviews. That's another problem. I could not, I'm not an angry person. I'm not an angry critic. I'm just too nice. I can't fly into a rage over these really bad toys and games and movies unless they really get under my skin, like the Muppet Swords of Oz. It, it just, I am so fake, it's not even funny. I, at least with my blog, I feel like I'm genuine. And at least when I'm just uploading these raw footage things to uh, to my channel, then people can appreciate it for the footage. And they're not judging me based on how horrible my voice is, which I have a horrible voice. I have a horrible look. I have a horrible on-screen presence. It's just... <laughs> um... Honestly, it's kind of sad that I don't want to do any more on-screen stuff because I do have this idea for a show where I'm talking about obscure TV shows and I'm also uh, analyzing these movies and going, are they really that bad? Yeah, but, you know, that those are things that I want to do, but I probably shouldn't do that, that I'm not really comfortable with. So I don't know. Maybe I'll have to work with somebody else. Maybe I'll have to. Maybe I'll find somebody who wants to do the, to do those things. Maybe I can find somebody who does have an on-screen presence, who's just starting out, doesn't know what they want to do, and then I can come up and say, "Hey, I got some ideas. You want to work together? Uh, you do, you be the on-screen presence. I'll help, I'll help write and animate and all that sort of stuff." I, I, of course, these are just theoretical. Uh, what I really want to do, I really want to focus on my animations. I feel like I've been uh, neglecting my animations for quite some time. I, I don't, I, I love doing doing these reviews. I love doing these videos, and I'm I'm absolutely going to be playing and uploading these plug and play gameplay videos because everyone seems to love those on my channel. So even if I'm not reviewing them, I'm still going to be uploading the videos. I don't know. I just need to... These older videos just make me think. Just where am I now? Where am I in in contrast to where I was? Am I any better off? Um, I think I am more confident with my writing. I think I am more um, creative. Well, actually, I think I was a little more creative with the on-screen stuff. With the on-screen stuff, I can think of a lot of different angles to use, a lot of different ways to pull off a shot uh, you can't you can't pull that off as much with a blog yeah unless you're a great artist which I so am not I, I am horrible at drawing and animating and all that sort of stuff so it, eh, I don't know I, I can only express through words where I'm I kind of like to think visually <sighs> but at least when I'm writing I sound genuine at least when I'm animating I, I look like I know what I'm doing or at least I'm having fun doing it I'm these characters look great so while I want to go back and do this directed disaster show again I just don't feel like I could do it but I don't regret it like I said in the last episode in the last commentary I did I don't regret doing these episodes they they're Hard for me to watch today, but at the same time, they were a jumping-on point for me. They really introduced me to what being a YouTuber is all about. Uh, um, what It showed me what I shouldn't do, 
it showed me all this stuff that is not in my field that isn't helping me whatsoever and helped me find a personality honestly <laughs> and this last part where I'm uh, carrying the box I, I I didn't overdub it I really should have but no I had the microphone up my shirt and this leads into the Muppet Wizard of Oz and I really can't wait to feature the the Muppet I can't wait to do the Muppet Wizard of Oz commentary but that'll be for another day but yeah, uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you for listening to this commentary. It was a huge rush of nostalgia to come back and experience this again, good and bad. And, well, I'll see you again for the next episode, whenever that might be. It will not be in another year. I guarantee that. So thank you and good night and enjoy your, enjoy your life.